Hi guys, today we'll be talking about the holidays according to Humphrey by Betty J. Bunny. This is another one of those according to Humphrey series, and today we'll be talking about the holidays according to Humphrey. The number seventh book of the according to Humphrey series. Let's get started. The holidays according to Humphrey is pretty nice. This literally talks about all of the time that holo that the first holiday that Humphrey ever spent, ever had. And this was when he went to camp, summer camp with his friends. So yeah, that would be nice. And that was nice for Humphrey. And he was like extremely happy. First of all, he thought that the end of school would mean the end of his pet career. Also, he might think that he will have to get back the petorama. And yeah, there was even a list that what would happen to, what happened, what could happen to Og and, Og and, yeah, and also Humphrey, if school and holidays were over. And these are it is. Things I could do if I had school. At least. One, go back to petorama. The pet shop I came from. Not a good idea. Two, teach other hamsters to read and write. Where? Petorama? What about Og? Find a school that doesn't end. How to find one? In my hamster wall? <laughs> Four. Four. Work at Maycross Manor. I've already been there to help people who are sick or injured. Maybe they'd like Og too. Five. Hit the road with Og and roam free, but not after seeing those scary creatures in the film. And his list doesn't look promising. Yeah, doesn't even look promising. So all of those lists had some problems and some misunderstandings that Humphrey had and also he didn't have a misunderstanding that the end of school was literally the little ill end of education, which is not true. Now during this book, like some people thought, there was even one guy who tried, who said, who said that Humphrey, that, who said that all of this thing all of the people, the animals in the creature reserve should should be really should be really like be freed. Okay, I had to stop the video to find the page here and I finally found it. And it says here there was this there was like a nature reserve in the camp that was a tree trunk and there was this one day there was a sign which said free the animals, release our wild animals. Okay, on the poster it actually said animals. But I think we all knew what it meant. Also, in smaller letters underneath the sign said, Free Lovey, Jake, Og, and Humphrey. Now, they misspelled Humphrey. Instead of H-U-M-P-H-R-E-Y, he spelled H-U-M-P-H-U-M-F-R-Y. Uh, and then Humphrey just wrote in this, like, The sign maker was definitely not a good speller. I'm literally, he can't even spell properly. He, he misspelled animals to aminal. I mean, literally, that's inappropriate. And also, the other people were just thinking that Free Humphrey, he isn't a wild animal. And he just protested that. It's just, it's just like everyone blamed Noah because he said, like, just like freeing everybody. And then, and then. Oh, and then Miss Katie at assembly, at assembly said said that they needed a little talk. Bef and this is what we said. I'm gonna have to quote this from the book. Okay, <clears throat> before we start, we need to do a little talking. There were some signs that went up today about freeing our animals. First of all, if you want to talk about a problem, just come to me. No need to put up signs anonymously. Anonymous was the funny name people called themselves when they didn't want to give out the real name. It's a good idea to issue, he said. So let me say this. We're hoping to release Lovey, but only when she's completely healed. Jake has been our camp mascot for a while, but I'd be happy to see how you all feel about releasing him. I go part. <laughs> Not like half Holloway was in favor of letting us all go wild. My whiskers twitch as I listen intently. As for Organ Humphrey, they are pets. They're not to be released in the wild. They are only on loan to us. Understand? Who did it and was an uproar from the crowd. Half of them was cheering, Humphrey, Humphrey, Humphrey. The other half chanted, Og, 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 Og. All except Noah, who wasn't chanting at all. He was just surprised, the uh, just watching the other campers, looking surprised. The noise was deafening until Miss Wright gave a mighty blow on her whistle. There will be order, she cried. 
she loves blowing her whistle and it is, according to Humphrey it is very delicate it is very strong and pretty making the ears of little hamsters delicate hmm. and then there was a comedy comedy let me show you some of the scripts from the book I'll go up here and ask them what he was doing. I'm trying to figure out what kind of tracks these are. AJ answered loudly, pointing at the ground. Aldo said, they look like wolf tracks to me. And Simon came out class and, and AJ what they were doing. And when they explained, Simon said, they look like bear tracks to me. Brad came out next and asked what they were doing and then said, they look like badger tracks to me. This went on a few times with other with the other blue jays. Well, AJ rushed on again and said, you guys, those are train tracks. <laughs> and then there was Maria and even Mrs. Wright. And then there was Sully Richie leading Mrs. Mac, Aldo and Maria, and even Miss Wright directly towards the rest of the boys, <laughs> hanging on to each other's waist, huffing and puffing, tooting and trooking. Yes, Miss Bright blew her whistle like a riddle train. All the blue jays ran off screaming. The skit was a hit! <laughs> and then the chickadees went next. One by one, they joined Abby, who was standing but with her legs bent, just as she was sitting on a bench. Once all the girls were sitting on the bench, there was no bench, but they did a good job of pretending to sit on one. Maria came strolling by and asked them what they were doing. We're sitting on this invisible bench, Mercy, Marisa answered. Oh, Maria said. Then she pointed to the other side of the stage. But I moved it over there yesterday. With that the chickadees all tumbled to the floor. While the crowd laughed and clapped, I clapped too. <laughs> See? Invisible chair is actually just air chair. <laughs> this is so funny, guys. I mean, these skits are so cool. However, I have to say, before we go on to the next set, I want to say that these holidays, according to Humphrey, is pretty nice because of, like, the cover, I have to say, again, all of these covers from now on had all the hamster pictures from the Giddy's images. Those are all the things that have in the comment. And the letters, those are almost all the same. Okay, next, next, to the next skit. Okay, okay, Humphrey, showtime, you know what to do. Okay, help, help. The skip began as Carrie came up to the door and opened the part way. Then she slammed it shut and immediately began running around the stage, calling help, help. And then there was a monster behind the door, a big monster. And then she, and then like Nancy said, no way. Then she opened the door, shut it again, and began running around the stage, shouting, help, help. When Miranda came out and asked what was wrong, Lindsay described the monster's glowing eyes, red fangs, and ugly face. Then she asked if anybody was brave enough to take a look at it. Gail was next. She took one look, screamed, and ran away. Oh, she was a good screamer, too. The rest of the robins did the scream. <laughs> All those ears were twitching from the scream. Finally, Kyla addressed the audience. Is there anyone who out there brave enough to look behind the door? Miss Mac stood up. This was all arranged ahead of time, I have to admit. I will. Then she came up the stage, opened the door wide, and jumped back, screaming. At the same time, Miranda came from behind me and pushed my cage out onto the stage so everyone could see me. A monster, a monster, she screamed, running around the stage. She acted really scared. Scared, I guess. <laughs> now I was on this big stage with all the campers watching me. As soon as everyone saw me, they smiled and started to laugh because they knew I was no monster. I said, so I'm not sure how well my voice carried on. So this is like all of the about all of the skits from the book, and these are so much comedies. I can't even believe it. Oh, and also one more thing about this holiday recording book. Why I say this is another reason why I say this is the great one of the great books of the according to Humphrey series is because. Of those comedies and also i've been planning to go camping last year but because of the coronavirus it got it got locked away now what we learned from this story is the same thing that we learned from the other stories you can learn a lot by yourself you can learn a lot of yourself by taking care of another creature and i took that advice by having a pet named mary a hamster now this is like one of the craziest and one of the funniest things I've ever read in a whole world. This is like comedy mixed with realistic fiction. Only without the talking part. Now this is what I loved about it is that, I mean, all these things were cool. And also, one more last thing before I go. And here's Humphrey's top 10 things to pack for camp. Now there's like earplugs, just in case somebody has a whistle. Stickers, because you never know when you'll need one. 
and good books and cards are a game for a rainy day. If that is true, I heard a thing that is save it for a rainy day, but I don't think it's that rainy day. Number four, a cage for protect. This is not for humans. Delete this lotion for poison ivy, which I hope, hope, hope hamsters don't get. Delete the hamster part. An interest in learning new things. Yeah, that would be nice. I always wanted to do that. A good cook, like Maria, who is generous with treats. Yum, yum. Ropes for tying knots, because it looks like fun. Yay. A spirit of adventure. You need it, of course. A friendly attitude. You will make new friends, which is what camp is all about. Bonus item. Bongo drums, if your camp loves them. Yeah, I guess so. Now these are basically all the all basically all of the holidays according to Humphrey series. And from now and this is the end of the series for now. But if but there are two more books that we need to talk about, but I'll tell you them in the next video. I'll show you next time. Shin Han out.